Come Shoot, on, Frick, we should have done a little Instagram beforehand. We started filming on that. So let me go here. Are we ready? Are we, are we live? This is what I wanted. There we go. Okay, we're live, Dan. Yep. We're live. I'm over here, Dan. Yep. <laughs> so if only you could see what was behind the camera. Jake hurt his back. I'd love you to see Danny doing the impression of that. So Danny Bell is the cameraman, but Danny's got lots of experience in recording and whatever, so we'll do just fine. So what we're gonna do tonight is just kind of give you a feel for what it's like to be in the class. So this is PHP number 14, Jake, or 15? I think it's number 15. So it's our first international class since the fall of 2019. <coughs> Somebody's being, and it is it's a day three. So the guys all came in on Sunday night. We had a little meet and greet, fricked at a barbecue. And then we were right at it first thing Monday morning, seven o'clock. We have, uh, we normally have 14 students. We have 15, I'll tell you why. I'll introduce that person. They did, we did, uh, what did we do? Uh, sharpening. Sharpening was our Monday experience. We started doing some dovetail, no, well, working with dovetail saw, just doing some cuts on Monday. Tuesday we did dovetails, and today we uh, dimensioned a piece of lumber. And half lines. And then we did half lines. So they're working on half lines right now. So we're just gonna wander around a little bit. First I'm gonna give you a little review of the shop, and then, uh, and then we'll talk to some people. So this is the door that you come in, also known as the front door, off the street. This, you, you've, you've seen this already, but I'll just fill you in. So this is the Joe Power Memorial Workshop. Joe Power was my neighbor growing up. He was a World War II vet. If you come over and look at this, his recruitment picture. Now Kevin Lasky, good friend of ours, who also works here. Kevin is the artist. And about eventually, this whole wall, each one of these panels, is going to be a painting depicting some aspect of his service during World War II. Joe signed up in 1939. He volunteered for the Canadian, Royal Canadian Artillery, fought all the way through the war, was injured by a mortar on March 10, 1945. Left him paralyzed on his right side for life. I grew up with his sons. So the last picture we have is the older Joe that everybody around here would know with his medals. And the ones in between are waiting, we're waiting on, if anybody's watching that has any pull, we are waiting on the Canadian government to provide his family with his military, give me the exact title, please. His official military record. His official military record, because Luther's doing all the research on this. Like most World War II vets, they never mentioned anything to the family over the years. So we want to know, because there's a few. He signed up for Royal Canadian Artillery, but he retired and served part of the time as part of the SDNG Highlanders. And he was a Bren gun operator. So there's just some stuff in there that we want to be sure of before we start painting pictures. So that's what we're waiting on. So pull some strings in Ottawa if you can. So a uh, little, little more. So this is, this is a roller hockey rink in the winter, and then when we take the classes out, the walls, the boards, the boards all come out and expose the walls. So if we come over here, there's the roller hockey blades all waiting for next season. And this is our, uh, I want to show you what Kevin did for me. So for those of you, you know we've been collecting planes and saws and antique tools to try to give it some ambiance. So there's our collection of Stanley Bedrocks. Uh, Jake, can you help me here? Who got us the number two? Aaron. Aaron Fenn got us the number two. Where did we get the number three? From uh, Ahmed? No, I think I bought it. Excuse me. So we bought the three, the four, the four and a half. If you remember, we did a YouTube on this. We found the four and a half and it was a mess. We restored that. I must have bought the five. Uh, this is a five and a quarter, which is a hard one to find. Ahmed got us this one. Five and a half. We got six, seven. Luther got us the number eight, but neither got us one of these, too. Did you get us one? Did you, you got us the five. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Luther got us the five the and the eight. It's all messy. Yeah, it's all messy. 
<laughs> and then down here, so I just wanted to show you this. I thought this was cute. So I, I wish I could remember the chap's name, but a guy in Texas sent us this. He said it's the largest hand saw you could find. <laughs> and this is the saw that inspired me to do the three-quarter saw. So this was Len Robichaud's saw. Len was a good friend of mine, John Robichaud's dad. I knew Len. He, he fought in World War II as well. And that was his saw that passed on to John. I thought it was such a cute little saw. We, we made our little three-quarter saw after that. There's, uh, these are three um, Stanley 750 chisels, 750 or 720. And Dennis, Dennis, uh, I won't say his last name because he didn't make a mention, but Dennis up in Ontario, Dennis Lee, actually, I'm going to say it anyway. Dennis sent those to me, very nice, wanted to be part of our display. It was my idea to take a big hunk of lumber and mill it like that. Kevin, did, Kevin painted the antique Stanley sign for me, which I thought looked great. And then we've got some, I'm not sure where these came from, we've got some old smoke shade, draw, draw, draw knives. Big long collection of back saws, that Luther found most of those, as well as the panel saws hanging up there. If you get any ideas that would make this not wrapped it up a notch, then let me know. All right, let's go back up this way. We go over on this side. These are our lumber racks that Willie made for us. We used to have a big lumber rack out here, but it took up so much space, we had to consolidate it. So we store all of our lumber in here. Those racks down there are eventually going to become lockers for the guys, but we have yet to get that far. And then the kitchen. So, uh, you, those of you who, want, who, uh, who don't mind me coming over and asking you questions, raise your hand and I'll just, I'll make my way over. Well, let's go over here. Look at this handsome young man. He be named Phil. So Phil is a, a combat wounded vet. Can I say? Can I say where you're from? Yeah. Okay, where are you from? So originally from Cleveland, Columbus, Mississippi. Uh, home right now, unfortunately, but I'll be moving back to North Carolina here shortly. So say a shout out to your two girls. Well, Maddie, Lily, if you're watching, hi. I'll be home soon. So, you've been here for three days. Did you learn anything? Yes, I did. You mentioned something about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still have to maintain my weight standards, and uh, the food here has been phenomenal. Phenomenal food. So, so show us something you did. Um, well, your, be so your, your best one. My best one. Let me see. Uh, I don't know. They're all pretty good. What do you think, Luther? Oh, <laughs> uh, these ones right here. <laughs> lot, lot more, we're big on moral support. <laughs> definitely big on moral support. <laughs> well, I've definitely cut a couple dovetails. And I have a set of half blinds here that we're in the Wait a minute, wait a minute, we're not done with these. Dan, can you come in, can you come in close on this? That was the first one I cut. That was the first ever. Had you ever cut a dovetail before this? I had tried to. Tried to? Yeah. How come it says rock cut? Is that one of your demonstration ones? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's my work. <laughs> These are all good. Very good. That one you need to uh, plane, plane up. More. We mm -hmm. haven't done it yet. That's good. Very good. Now, today you're working on half plane. You got one completed yet? I do. It's still drying. And hasn't been planned yet. Well, we'll come back and see that. All right. Have that done before we leave? Yes, I will. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, just a word to fellow combat wounded veterans. Look, there's people out there. Directly to the camera. There's people out there that actually care about you and, and, and what you've done and are there to support you. Um, get online. Look up robcosmic.com, the Purple Heart Project. Um, it's been a great experience. You get to... to uh, be with all your fellow vets and, and lament about your stories and whatnot. Uh, you get to learn. You get to learn uh, a great skill, <laughs> a great hobby that's uh, very soothing, very stress relieving. Also, you know Luther Sheely, He's pretty. He's pretty cool too. But uh, definitely look it up. How about those who support us? To everybody. Yeah, yes, I'm. I'm blown away with the uh, the the level of support that you all have shown not only for the best, but for Rob as well, for his cause. Um, 
And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and thanks for the support that you showed to, uh, to the vets and, and to his, his um, cause. Can you share us with your, uh, your where you've been deployed? Um, so I have uh, two deployments to Afghanistan, um, three deployments to Iraq and, and other places in the Middle East. Uh, I have two deployments on ship and uh, two deployments to UCOM and AFRICOM. So. Anything about your future plans? Um, well, I retire from the Marine Corps here in about a month and a half. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, still looking for a job. So uh, I'll be in the Eastern North Carolina area if anyone's, uh, <laughs> anyone's offering a job. Uh, besides that, I'm just going to move back to North Carolina to be closer to my kids. So if anybody needs a guy that can make short board dovetails, you could possibly... Possibly. Help I, I, might, I might be able to make them a little bit on the longer board, too. All right. <laughs> But, yeah. Thank Thanks. you, Phil. We'll be back around to see the half line. Yes, sir. Anybody else wants to uh, say hello, veteran or civilian student alike? I'm not. I'm not excluding anybody. Oh, I know a guy we could talk to. So you've heard us talk about Jack Lane how many times? Multiple. So Jack is the uh, leader, the uh, commander of the Bench Brigade. So all of the vets in here tonight, there are seven of them, will receive, I'm going to let Jack actually tell you how, but they're all going to have a bench delivered to their home so they can continue the work. We sent them home with the tools. Jack's going to tell you a little bit about the organization, might even give you a few names, a few shout outs, and he also is going to tell you about Stella. <laughs> well. Just want to say uh, thank you to everybody that supported the Bench Brigade and, and the, particularly the PHP over the last couple of years since we've been involved with this. And uh, as Rob said, I am the coordinator of the Bench Brigade and uh, we're 150 volunteers in the United States, Canada, UK, Australia and Israel. And um, we, we build benches at no cost for the vets that are graduates of the Purple Heart Project Training Hand Workshop. And, um, we built about 50 benches so far, and in this class, we've got seven people in, in here that are going to receive benches. And I would like to give a shout out to um, Dr. Eric Rice in um, Omaha and Jamie Fagel over in North Carolina. And uh, I shouldn't have done this because I'm going to miss somebody. But uh, you have time the, to come up with the names, and we'll come back around if you yeah, can get somebody. Um, the Rod Scabar up in uh, in Alberta and. Uh, Brett in Alberta, and give me a chance to, I'll, I've got a list of them over there. But um, the way the Bench Brigade works is um, when a vet has attended the Training the Hand workshop and they, they've gone back home, we pair them up with a volunteer that uh, builds the bench. They make contact as soon as possible after they've been to the class, the, the Bench Brigade volunteer does. and. Um, the idea is for us to pair them, the vet up with a vet that's as close as possible to, to, the, um, to the bench brigade builder so they can actually get together and actually meet whenever they, the bench brigade volunteer presents or delivers this bench. And um, so far we've been able to have face-to-face -face, uh, deliveries for all but about five or six of the benches. So it's a great program. and. Um, I wanted to say one thing too about the Purple Heart Project that um, you know I've been waiting for a couple of years to get up here to see this class and to meet Rob and to meet the rest of his family and all the folks that, that work with the uh, the Purple Heart Project, particularly Luther Sheely. I, I could not particularly particularly Luther Sheely. And uh, but if you if folks have no doubt this pro this program is exactly. Um, what Rob and all the folks say that it is, this is the real deal. These folks are taking care of these vets. Um, their heart is in this, and um, this this is a worthwhile program. And for the for the civilians out there that um, that have been thinking about attending this class, come on up here because I, I guarantee you, you'll come away with this. Not only with your woodworking skills sharpened, but you'll have a whole new perspective on the Purple Heart Project and. And it will it will redouble, redouble your um, your get it factor for what's going on with this program, and, and I think you'll you'll find that it's more than worth the effort everybody's putting into it. So, 
Um, again, thanks to all that have supported the Bench Brigade, and thanks to all that have supported the, uh, the PHP. And uh, if, you, if you know a vet that, uh, is, that uh, is still struggling with the scars of war, this is a great thing to get them lined up with. So. Stella! Stella is my great-granddaughter. She, is, uh, she was born on the 24th of March. She weighed one pound, one ounce. She was 10 and a quarter inches long, but she's all the way up to one pound, 12 ounces now. She's doing great. Um, she has been taken off of the ventilator. She's off, they've dialed the, the CPAP um, settings all the way back now. She's breathing on her own. They've taken her off a lot of the medications that were uh, to help her blood sugar stabilize. And uh, there's been a lot of, a lot of interest with the, the folks that follow the live events, particularly the Cosmans, uh, about Stella. But thank you all for your prayers and support. You know, she's a... It's all right. It's all right. And the fashion statement is beyond explanation. Don't you like what I did with the... Uh, the your dinner? <laughs> yes, my dinner. <laughs> Lasagna. Jake took the... Where are you going with it? Where are you, where are you talking? Oh, yeah, that way you wanted to speak. But Jake, you never get to speak in front of the camera. You always get to uh, catcall behind I say, the camera. I say enough behind the camera. So this is for this class? All right, so Wade Jensen, handsome young man right here. Wade, Wade Jensen is going to have a bench built by who? Dr. Eric Rice. I can't read your writing. Dr. Eric Rice, Jerry. That would be I'm coming around. So Jerry is a medic, a Vietnam medic. And Jerry is going to have his bench built by uh, me um uh, me How do you spell how do you pronounce his name? Amid. <laughs> What's wrong with The rest of us would call him Ahmed. Down in Oceanside, California. Carlos over there, we'll be over to talk to him. Carlos Garcia is going to have his bench built by Dean Lops, Lop, Loppy. Phil, Phil's way up there in the corner. We just talked to Phil. Phil's bench is being built by Jamie Jamie Fagel. I know that. I know Jamie. Um, Mike, where are you, Mike? Hello. There's Mike. Mike's over there. Mike's going to have his bench built by Rod. Skabar. And Freddie. Sure. Freddie's back here. Freddie's going to have his bench built by Brett Becker. Yeah. Freddie and, uh, and Mike are both uh, two Canadian vets from Alberta. Thank you, Jack. All right, so, oh, wait a minute. Jack, let's see what's going on. Show some proof that you've done something. <laughs> Dovetails? Yeah, which is which? Uh, that was, this is number one. Okay, and how many have you done before? Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot? So you've had some practice? Yeah. It shows, because this is exceptional. That could be mine. In fact, it might be mine. <laughs> no, it isn't. Okay, so this is what you learn. Working on a half line. Not done yet. I can see some stuff that seems to be done, but we'll be back to see it. Yep. So, uh, pitter patter, Jack. Smosey. We're right in the middle of the thick of it. Let's go up here. So, every once in a while, we have to modify a bench. So, uh, Dave, what's Dave's last name in central Alberta? Dave Anderson, who my daughter Loren, hello Loren, delivered cookies to. Dave Anderson built a bench for Josh Brian, who was in, B in British Columbia. Drove how many hours to deliver it? Uh, 10 hours. 10 hours each Brett, way. Brett Small was with him. Brett, Brett? Fred Small. Fred Small was with him. Drove 10 hours one way and back to deliver the bench. And then we had, so Luther got a car, we had a, we had a, uh, a uh, combat wounded EOD, Navy SEAL, worked with Navy SEALs, and um, 
he had had a parachute accident, left him paralyzed from the waist down. And we kind of lost contact with him because he was in a class back in 2017, maybe? 17? And uh, one day, we, we had not able to find him at all. One day, he surfaced, he contacted Luther, look, looking for, actually, let Luther tell the story. Well, he contacted me. You want to do a selfie while you're doing this? <laughs> I can will. You can, you can use the so, joystick. Um, so he contacted me. He said, hey, Luther, I, I, I'm, I'm back. I have some issues, but we're, we've moved up to Montana, and I'm looking to build a bench, and I wonder if you have any bench plans. Austin. We didn't say that yet. Uh, any bench plans, plans you could send me. So we had just kind of started the bench for days, and I'm like, well, boy, oh, boy, do I have a deal for you. And I immediately said, hang on, we're on a conference call with uh, uh, Jack. I got Jack on the line. Hooked him up, and lo and behold, three months later, an awesome bench got delivered to uh, to Austin up in Montana. So, what was unique about this is Austin, uh, Austin Reese, Austin Reese, Austin needed a custom bench, and Dave happens to be an architect. So Dave went to work and built a bench around the limitations that Austin was dealing with, being in a wheelchair. And if you want to see the video, where do they see the video? Rob Cosman's PHP Bench Brigade Facebook. And you can see the actual video of when they delivered it. It was awesome. So big shout out to Austin, big shout out to Dave. So anyway, we have a guy that we needed a bench like that for as well. But I thought, because Jeremy, Jeremy Brees was in our class several years ago, and Jeremy was a double, double amputee above the knee. And uh, we modified the bench right there, and I, it worked best because we could tailor it to him. So Scott came to visit us, and we needed a special bench for Scott. So Jake and I went to work on this. Jake did most of it, and we modified this bench for Scott. I'm Scott. Now that's that's Scott. <laughs> follow, follow the trail of blood. <laughs> he pulled a freck on his finger with a chisel. Scott is a uh, retired Special Forces. Uh, how many years, Scott? 28 years in the Army. 28 years in the Army. And uh, I'll let Scott tell you whatever he wants to tell you, but let him introduce himself. He'll want to say hello to his... Yep, I'm... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I need, uh, I need uh, a microphone. It's right there. Oh, you got it. Okay. Can, is that good enough? Yeah. So... Say hello to your wife first. Oh, oh, like to say hello to uh, my wife Laura and my son Zach. How much you miss a, uh, her? How much I you miss her? her? Miss her lots. And how you've uh, been really good boy. Rocking I've been great, store. eating great. Yes. Vegetables. Lots of good fresh free. air. Lots of good fresh air. Fresh air, no sun, no. Yeah, food's been fantastic. So Amen. you uh, you don't mind talking about this, and I think people need to understand the kind of sacrifice that you guys have made. So if you can give us a short version of how you ended up. I ended up being a double AK amputee. Uh, I was uh, blown up in, uh, by an IED in Afghanistan in 2010. Uh, as a result of that, I was missing one leg from the explosion. Uh, I, I saw that, realized that happened. Then I uh, wasn't sure about the other, the other leg. My other leg was in really bad shape. Uh, it had to be amputated in country. It, what we call the cash, which is like give your first medical care, first line medical care. Also had significant arm injuries. I uh, actually have what the doctors call a non-union. It's really a broken arm. My body won't take any screws, plates, anything like that. So as a result of, of that, um, spent a year and a half in Walter Reed, most of it for limb salvage just to save my arm, so I have it. Uh, I don't have a lot of feeling in my hand, but I have enough that I can enjoy. And, and tell, tell them the best thing we discovered about your arm. I do a perfect <laughs> tail on the right side. Ten, ten degrees. Ten degrees. <laughs> it's locked the there. arm is locked like that. So he does these, this perfect cut on this way, but in order to try to do the other side, he almost had to flip out of his, yeah, out I of can't, his wheelchair. Yeah, I can't do it. So, But I cut a perfect ten degree on the right side of a tail, so that's pretty helpful. We spin it around. Yep, I spin it around, and then and I just do, the other side. do it from the back Where side. Where are they? And do the, uh, I have them right up under here. 
that first dovetail I did. This is? This is the I, first one? Yep, this first one. Okay, we're getting close. Don't show the back side. That's what that is. That's so good. <laughs> now, he's had to use, uh, he had to get creative because <clears throat> the, uh, there's a little bit of play in the chair, so even with the brake on, it moves a little bit. Moves especially, a lot. Yeah, especially when it comes to planing. But we discovered that he's Japanese at heart because it's a lot easier to pull than it is to push the plane. So once he discovered that, he was off to the races. Flip the plane around, pull it through, because I can't really grab it and control it, but I can pull it through and control it. It's been working really good. How sharp did you get your chisels? Enough that I'm also bleeding. Profusely. Profusely, yes. <laughs> but fortunately, we have a retired medic yes. in name Jerry. So he's Who got, is he's also got, another Fifth Special Forces Group member. So he's been getting good care. And we appreciate having him. It's fantastic. I've never met anybody that has the extent of the injuries he has and has such a such a uh, unbeatable spirit and just incredible. I mean, if everybody could take an example of, of Scott's, there'd be a lot less whining in this world. It's not that hard. You have two choices. You can roll over and feel sorry for yourself or you can make the best of what you got. You can't do it the same way. You can't do maybe what you used to do the same way, but you can still do it. You just have to do it differently. Where can they go to see, is, that, is there anywhere they can go to see that film that we watched today that was done on The CNC? film we saw today, uh, about, I did that uh, with Charlie Daniels when he started his foundation for uh, Wounded Soldiers. And we did that for Veterans Day in 2015, I believe, and it ran on uh, CMT and what's the other country network? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know, yeah, here in Canada, you wouldn't know. Yeah, GAC and CMT, it ran on both of those. You could... Uh, Is it on YouTube? You could search for uh, Charlie Daniels Journey Home Project 2015 and you would find the full video. Good. It's worth it, by all means, absolutely. You'll meet you'll meet him, a younger version. Yes. You'll meet his wife. And Better you'll version. His, you'll meet his son. Can you tell him what your son does? Oh, son, uh, son is uh, excellent. He's 25 now. He's in the military. He would rather be here at this class than me. He loves hand tools. He does everything. He mentions his own lumber. Uh, Self-taught. Um, he loves you. that, but he is a uh, brand new. Captain, and he flies the uh, Apache helicopters, and he's stationed up at Fort Drum, New York. Near? Near Canada. Famous, Canada near, near the famous, who, what famous person lives near Fort Drum? Super Dave. Super Dave. Super Dave, Super Dave. has been nice enough, has even invited my son to his workshop so they, he could help him with some of his uh, skills. Probably to do some stuff that Dave doesn't want to do. <laughs> Dave that was, and the big sign on the wall says, Super Days on Fine Woodworking. Famous. Yep. But it's been a great help to my son oh, in that no, area. That's just Dave. That's why he's Super Dave. Thank you, Scott. No, Appreciate thank it. you. Right, can I shake this hand? I sure can. Thank you, brother. Notice all my projects have blood on them, so <laughs> I'm going to just keep that up. So I'm not, they'll, know, they'll know it's mine and they'll have the blood marks. There will be a spot on the floor. Anybody else? Well, I got a little treat for you. So over here, this distinguished. Now, Danny, what would you call a guy like this? <laughs> Q-tip. Yeah, Q-tip? Yeah. <laughs> I said Q-tip. Well, What's a Q-tip? Yeah, What's a Q-tip? He said, well, you know, the white hair. hair. <laughs> Get that white hair and white sneakers to be Q-tip. So Moose has been kicking around for a few years, been helping us with this. He's got a little something, he brought a little something up to give to all the vets. So take it away. Yeah. Well, give me a break. Anyone that, uh, anyone that follows Rob, that's a dubious thing to do, but uh, we've uh, always promoted the uh, so called dead cat sweaters. And uh, they've been a popular item with supporters. It's a good way to get the word out about uh, this wonderful program. And when. Uh, all the vets are in town. I wanted to make sure that they all got uh, uh, their very own if uh, they liked them. So we gathered them up and uh, we'd like to pass them out if we can get some help uh, calling out names. To, should we get them to come up? Yeah. Probably easier. Yeah. Do they get to sit on Santa's lap? <laughs> <laughs> you have to 
to turn the camera off. Bad Santa. <laughs> Santa gone wrong. Okay, we have... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hold this near you. Okay. you... <laughs> yes, well, don't let it get too far away. I might lose my following here. Okay, uh, anyone with... Not, a, are the numbers dropping, Frick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone with a large here. We have five large. Who asked so, for a large? Here we go. Big Congratulations. Thanks. There you go. And the name? Phil. Phil. Thank you very much. Thanks. Show the logo. Show the logo. Uh, you can get your own, too, if you want to feel a part of this. Large. Carlos, I remember, Carlos. Yes, remember you, Carlos. Thank you. There you we'll go. Be, we'll You're be welcome. over to see Carlos. Yeah. And uh, another large. Uh, Jerry. 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 Thanks, this is Jerry. Sandy, Thank you. Thank you. Well, the dead cat keeps you warm on a, on a cool summer well, night. Go in the house, turn on the air conditioning, put it on. <laughs> large. Another large. Another large. It was going to be Mike. Mike? Mike? It you shrinks. It'll be a schmedium later. Oh. <laughs> if that's too big, we'll, uh, I've got a medium in the car. Thank you very much. I'd there like you to go, Mike. Hi to my wife, Lacey, and to Mike. I'm gonna come over and see you. Oh, okay. I'm gonna come over and see you. All we'll right. make it personal. I'll do that. And besides that, you live in Edmonton. You'll need that only 11 and a half months of the year. Yeah. <laughs> go Oilers. Go Oilers. I'm the last okay. large. Okay, large, last large is the man behind the camera. <laughs> is that it? Is everybody? We got everybody covered. We got, we got three XLs. Three two XLs. Oh, all right. Who's next? Two X. Freddie? Okay. Stop running, Freddie. Slow down. I'm going to give you an XL and get a 2X for you from the car. That's my Thank you, sir. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you. And Wade? The biggest and the baddest for the last. Yeah. So I thought it was XL, so I will get you 2X. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Go Trump! <laughs> <laughs> and one left. <laughs> What's that? One left? One left. No. Uh, oh, yeah, Scott. Yeah. Well, thank Scott. you. This one has mud flaps on it. So. <laughs> mud flaps? <laughs> yeah. I need this. You need a 2X? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. You're, you're very I, welcome. I really appreciate it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a good, I, I've got two. Two double X. That's my bad. All right. No, well, no, it is. And I'll look at the. I'll look at the text I got. I have three. Do you want to see this on camera? Who, who sent it to you? <laughs> Wasn't me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything bad about Jet Three XLs. See? Oh well. Grow into it, boys. You got four more meals here. <laughs> He's injured. He's injured. It's not his fault. And let, let's get a let's get a live testimony of what a dead cat sweater can do. <laughs> this is what it looks like after a year. <laughs> Getting a close I'm changing oil. It all changes. <laughs> it's not nearly as bright and bushy. But <laughs> so this is Chris. You know Chris. Chris is our, our uh, big support guy up in Fredericton that, that uh, helps us with production of the saws. Well, I've been wearing this for, well, since last March, so. So right after you got it, you text me, and what did you say? I thought it must have a heat source inside of it. It just kind of radiates your own body heat right back to you. It feels like it's generating heat. It hardly weighs anything as light. It's anyway, light as not just doing this commercial to sell dead cat sweaters. It's a fantastic garment. PatSecretGarden.com. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else want to talk to us? Freddie. Let's go down and visit Freddie. I keep wanting to sing a song when I say the word Freddie. What, what would that be? Freddie's way down here. Now, I'll tell you how small the what Canadian Army is. is. Al works here. What are the odds? Al Strath's, Al is a tank commander in the Strathcona, what's the official name? Uh, Lord Strathcona's horse. Lord Strathcona's horse. And they actually were in the same regiment. regiment. Knew a lot of the same, didn't actually know each other, but knew a lot of the same people, so very close. Freddie, you've been here for three days. What do you think? The learning. You mind holding that? Yeah, no problem. And I'll stick it I've, in your face. I've learned so much having not done 
much in the way of works or woodwork since since uh, shop class in high school about 30 some years ago and I was a little intimidated at first but the learning has been outstanding the support has been outstanding the uh, Luther has been outstanding <laughs> And uh, you know, I I gotta show you my uh, my the big cue card in the background. Did so, no influence. This is the first time I ever All right, did. Let's have a look. Wait a minute, now. I gotta put my glasses on. First time I ever did a dovetail. That was yesterday. First time. first time I ever did one. Okay. Is that the second time? This is the this is the one today. This is today the second the one, one today. I ever made. Huge difference. Okay. And I never done any of that Very before. Very good. Very good. And how much of this is Luther? A lot of this is, is Dan. A lot of this is Dan, Dan and Luther. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm spreading it out. I'm using both their, ex their experience, their knowledge, and their, you know their teaching abilities. You know what side your better done. <laughs> Danny's yeah. been a great help. Danny's yeah, been a great help absolutely. and very accomplished craftsman. So. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we have wonderful support here. I also want to say a, a shout out to, uh, thanks to, um, to Ross McKay from uh, Kodiak uh, Woodworkers Guild. Um, I got a nice little plaque here for my, for my bench when I get home, signed by all the, the people that, uh, that, that are supporting us. And uh, you know, I just think uh, we need more support for this program. Uh, being an injured member myself, uh, was, you know, we, 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 we do all this time in the military. We do, we give our life for what we do. And, and you know, to have something for us at the end where we still feel that we're a part of something is good because when, once we leave the military, even when it's not on our own terms, there's a big void. And, and for me, this is, this is filling a huge void. I mean, I've got plans with this. You're, what, what tours? Uh, so I've done five tours. I did uh, Bosnia twice. Uh, Kosovo and uh, two tours to Afghanistan and uh, you know I just chalk that up as experience in life and I move forward. You, who do you have, who's at home you want to say hello to? Uh, say hello to my wife Julie and my three boys uh, Joel, Tristan and Liam and my two older daughters Samantha and Melissa and my grandchildren. <laughs> And are you loyal to the oil? I am loyal to the oil. If the Calgary wins, I am not, not cheering home. for Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you who don't understand hockey, we're in the middle of playoffs. And the first, uh, the second round started last night. Yeah, last night. First game didn't go the way we wanted. No. But we have faith. Yeah, we have to encourage them anyway. So come back. Who scored the most touchdowns? Um, uh, 54 to 52, I think, was the score. <laughs> <finally>. <laughs> Wasn't a goalie's game. No. no, no. Wasn't a what goalie's about those game. who support us? I actually already mentioned that. Never so address yeah. fellow fellow combat wounded veterans who you think would benefit from this. You know, this is such a step forward, and you know, there's a lot of programs out there, but I guarantee you, this program is special. Um, the support you get while you're here. The, the camaraderie you make, plus you're also mixed in with, with other people that have come from other ways of life that have come in here to learn with you, share their stories, support you, and you know, the way I look at it is, is I'm making contacts here as well that I'm gonna maintain later. So I'm, I'm taking a lot of this home with me. So if you're a vet out there that's just thinking about it or not sure, you know, take that leap of faith, even if it's looking me up on Facebook or looking at somebody else and asking them because you're going to get probably the same type of answer from, from any of us that have been here that this is, this is, this is, this is important, this is, this is massive. Where, where are you? Where am I? Where are you? I'm at uh, Rob Cosman's Purple No, 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 no. where are you on here? Oh, jeez, yeah, this is me here. This is the patch That's for... That's the same as Sean's, isn't it? I don't know. This is Canadian, this is, this is the, um, oh no it's not, sorry. No, this is the Canadian Service, Canadian Forces Service Prison and Detention Barracks. Oh really? This is our version of, uh, I guess in the States it's Leavenworth. Leavenworth, Fort, yeah. Fort Leavenworth, uh, disciplinary barracks. Yeah, it, it's discipline. Yeah. <laughs> well, it not takes, a place it takes I wanna discipline go. to do good dovetails. So. Yes. Thank you so much. And it'll, thank you again. It'll, it'll come in handy. Thank you, brother. Ready, yeah. shake my hand. Thank you, sir. You're Always. welcome. And a little shout out to the cooks. Oh, amazing. I told them they should put out a recipe book. 
This is <laughs> definitely amazing. They might. Gary? Gary? Gary Burnett. Oh, Gary Burnett. Gary Is Gary Burnett. on tonight? He was he was planning on watching. He told me to give him a wink and a wave, but I come not. <laughs> He's behind the camera, Gary, but he misses you. Big hug. Always great to have Gary. Gary is a, a, a Vietnam, I almost said World War II, sorry. Gary is a Vietnam vet. And Gary was here with us. October 2019. October 2019. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We're right here. No, oh, Mike, Mike's blowing. I don't want to interrupt him. Carlos, yes, you, feel like, you feel like talking? I'll talk a little bit, sir. Talk a little bit? Yes, sir. I'm Rob. Hi, Rob. How, How are you doing? doing? That's coming, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Sir's behind you. You mind? You, you, you already oh, home that? Yes, sir. Just so we can hear you better. Yes, Rob. <laughs> Where are you from? So, I'm originally from Laredo, Texas, which is a border town, south, yeah. south, south Texas. Uh, but now I live in Poteet, which they call the strawberry capital of Texas. Cool. Uh, we just had a big festival down there. And everyone and everybody came came down from San Antonio, Austin, everybody. Um, been living there about seven, going on eight years. Um, as far as military experience, uh, I have just a little bit over four years. I was an infantryman. <clears throat> Spent uh, 11 months in Iraq, in Anbar province. Uh, so I got injured and spent my last two years basically in Bamsey in San Antonio where they took really good care of me, um, did therapy, had a couple surgeries, a couple staph infections, and had some hardware removed from my body. And, um, but yeah, Marine. Luckily, Army, Army, oh, Army, Army, yes, sir, Ar Army Infantry. Oh, this is just a... Uh, yes. <laughs> A trouble, baby. You threw me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a trouble cat child, but uh, yeah, I got out in uh, 2008 and went to school. Got out of there, finished uh, with my bachelor's in business, and uh, it's uh, had a hard time finding a job. But got my 2008 was a rough year. It was, it was. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, 2020. Here we are, another rough, rough two, three years. Uh, but I'm up here. Been a two-year wait. Um, due to COVID, everything got postponed, and finally they opened up the borders and got relaxed on the mandates. And now we're here, and it's been it's been an awesome few days. Um, like everyone talked about, probably the food. It's a uh, awesome hospitality. I told my wife I'm gonna jokingly I'm gonna send her up here, not for a woodworking class, but maybe a cooking class or two. <laughs> but uh, you might not be able to. Go yeah, yeah, and they're watching right now. I texted them a little while ago. So shout out to them. Uh, my kids, uh, Caitlin, Tatiana, Gianni, and Jessica, which she's, she's taking care of them, so uh, big respect for her in doing that. So she's holding up the, the household. <laughs> uh, so show her what you've been doing. Oh, I got a give couple. Us, give us your best example. <laughs> best example with. Have you ever cut dovetails before? No, never, never. So this, I, is, this is a first. I've tried bow ties, but nothing like this, nothing as detailed. Um, needs a little bit more saliva there, Luther. A couple licks. Oh, <laughs> he, gave, he gave it the lick. This is the first one? No, it was actually, I believe, my third one. Third? Yes, sir. Fine job. Cool. So practice makes perfect, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, you're working on a half blind? <laughs> yes. So I'm trying to get that one. All right. I'm going to come back around. Any, uh, I want you to just, uh, A, Talk to fellow combat wounded vets. Tell them what uh, they need to know. Is this too bright? Yep. Well, I mean, the organization, I mean, what they're doing for us is, is amazing. Uh, for those of you that think there's no one out there that if you feel forgotten, lost, uh, without a cause, uh, they put they put more from, from their hospitality that they showed us, showed me this week, it's, it's amazing. So, I talked to one of my buddies, I think he's watching Conan Markey, he's actually in Kittery, Maine, down the road, oh, yeah? and so he's one I'm going to recommend for the blue chip, uh, he's also a Purple Heart recipient, uh, but yeah, these guys are awesome, and <laughs> appreciate everything you guys are doing, <laughs> so. Shout out to all the folks that support us. <clears throat> and yeah, everybody, everybody that contributes, uh, the donations, it's amazing because it continues to bring us up here and learn new scale, and you... I mean, it keeps us busy and it helps us. This week that we're going to be up here helps us zone out. Uh, and Luther's 
Yeah, don't put his uh, his part in there. Um, but it's amazing. I mean, it helps you unwind and forget the stresses that you that go through your head. Um, not everyone has visible injuries, but I mean, PTSD is uh, is real and uh, helps you forget about things. You know, makes you makes you just relax, and it's amazing. And thank everybody for that has a part in this. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ron. My hand. Yeah, I'll take Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, where are we headed? We have lots of time. Oh, I know. Can we go a little longer? No. Anybody else just dying to dying to say something? We haven't had a civilian in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, where's your dumbbell? Oh, in your hand. Well, here, you introduce yourself. You're Alex. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask you, where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Moldova, and I'm proudly Canadian for 15 years. I'm so happy. Uh, and I'm really happy to be here with Rob. Like, like I knew about this. I knew about Rob for a few years, watching his videos, and was thinking about taking maybe a class, but then the COVID help happened. And during that time, I actually opened the PHP product for, uh, project for myself. I, I didn't know about that. And once I started reading and I'm watching what this project is about, that was a number one trigger to sign up. Awesome. Uh, on top of the whatever. Meeting Luther. On top I did, of meeting uh, Luther. Yeah, Luther was number number two. <laughs> After the whole PHP. No, no, Danny well, says. Well, you, you, you're gonna <laughs> share it between you guys. You guys, you guys, fantastic. Like honestly, uh, so really happy, really happy, to, uh, not only to see Rob and see his work life and then and then be student of his, but also see like real support and help veterans. Uh, this is a big deal. This is definitely uh, way, way to go, and uh, I hope this project will never stop and I just grow and more people come in because uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic people. It's, it's amazing. Whatever stories I've heard here, it's, it's a hard to it's, it's phenomenal. So, thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Oh, I told him like he can open this another business just for the food. It's five star restaurant. I, I'm not kidding. It's it's amazing. It's it, it, it's just perfect. It's Anita. Anita is the cook. Anita. So, make a video of her. Just what she is doing. I, I'm serious. Yeah, we should. We should. We'll get some footage of that this week. Yeah. That's a good tip. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. Thank you, Rob. Did you? Have, we're, we're gonna see a video. We're gonna see a. Uh, uh, gonna see a dovetail. Show me your best one. Well, they both a little bit ugly, so I'm not gonna show that. But this is my blind one, and I was just about. To you just you blew it up. Yeah. Well, we can't be witness to some violence, so we're gonna come back after you got it glued up, okay. just in case. What? You think it's not gonna work? No, I know it's gonna work. Well, Luther helped me. In so that case, the violence could be uh, on Luther. <laughs> All right, where are we headed? Jim, we gotta let's let's go down to see Jim. Jim's a local. So so you've heard you've heard me talk about Jim numerous times because Jim heads up the Canadian version of the Purple Heart Project out of Moncton, New Brunswick. So I met Jim. Came down one time to the shop to pick up some tools. Somehow we got talking about, well, I gave him the tour. Purple Heart Project, what we do with the benches. And at the time, we were just about to have a Canadian-only class. And uh, we didn't have any bench brigade builders in eastern Canada, or even close enough. So some Americans volunteered to make seven benches, shipped them to Maine, we were going to pick them up. Well, when Jim heard that, oh, I'll just tell you quickly. The next day I got an email and he said, all right, I put it out to the club. We're committing to make 10 benches each year for the Purple Heart Project. And all of the benches on this side of the room were delivered, built and delivered by the Kodiak Woodworkers Association Guild. Guild, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. So I'm going to let you hold this and tell them whatever you want to tell them. And, uh, 
mostly encourage people that want to participate to come and take the class, and you tell them, actually, I'm telling you too much, but just go ahead, Tim. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, yeah, it was last June I came down here, and uh, I came in to see him for a half an hour. I said, look, we got over 100 seniors in our uh, Woodworkers Guild. It's a 55-plus club in Riverview, New Brunswick. And uh, so we might be of some benefit to each other because you sell a lot of really nice tools, and you, uh, you, you teach a lot of really, really good practices. I'd like to introduce you to our club. And when he mentioned about the uh, lack of Canadian builders for Canadian wounded vets, I drove home to Moncton, two hour drive from here to my house and uh, in Riverview, and uh, I, there's, we really should be able to do something. It, there, there's no way that our Canadian wounded vets should have to depend on another country to build benches for them. And it, I sent an email out to the membership, got an immediate response, 18 people signed up to help benches, and they and a few other members that just couldn't, uh, didn't have the, uh, the time to, uh, to commit, some of them are still working, and uh, they couldn't commit to uh, the build the way we did it, an assembly line, but they donated money, and we raised $3,000. Within a week, uh, $3,000 in the bank, and... Uh, it was just, the response was awesome. I just told Moose about uh, a, a guy came into the shop. I thought he wanted to join. He said, no, I'm a metal worker. I used to file saws. That was my business. And uh, he heard about us. And he said that uh, as long as we were doing this, that he was going to sharpen all of our saw blades. And you can imagine 114 people with experience from professional down to zero the damage that gets done, the unintentional abuse that happens, it happens everywhere, but in a club like that, we go through a lot of blades. We dull them up pretty quick, and this guy will sharpen them, and that's worth a, that's worth a lot. It's amazing the doors that it opens. We'll keep on spreading the word, and anyone, anyone who is at, at all interested in doing hand tool woodworking, Come down and see Rob. Put your name in for one of these classes. It is well worth the money, and uh, I'm just having a blast. I'm 70 years old. I'm just taking up hand tool woodworking, and this is just... It's only this. taken 70 years to get you here. <laughs> well, I've been a power tool guy all the time just because it's easy. It's easy. I thought this stuff was beyond me, and if I can, at 70 years of age, if I can pick this stuff up and uh, I, I got to... Any kind of... Any kind of Oh, call yourself a rookie at 70. Yeah. <laughs> a half blind dovetail. That, that Moose was, is still waiting to get rookie of the year. <laughs> that, that, was, that was like that was dreamland for me. That's my first one, and that, that's unbelievable. I can't believe that I did that. It's far from perfect. Rob, Rob would never let you see it if, if uh, something like that came out of his shop. It wouldn't. Something like that wouldn't come out of your shop. You're talking about the bench brigade. Do you know who's behind us? Uh, Ken, yeah. Do you know Ken's built three benches? That's Perhaps. right. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, enough about me. I want to say hi to my wife, hi to my uh, kids, and hi to my grandchildren. Love you all, and uh, see you Sunday. Maybe. Maybe. Might want to stay. <laughs> so tucked away back here in the corner, I already makes a peep, is Ken Stewart. My guy. Take it over, Ken. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, Farmer from Kansas, retired, crop adjuster and all that. And uh, I went off to college. Dad sent me there. I never joined the service, you know, when Vietnam was on. Got through college, and the county told me that they wanted to give me a farm deferment because farmers were necessary at the time. I've always felt bad that I didn't serve. So this gave me a chance to give back to the veterans, you know. A great bunch of guys, great bunch of guys. I thank you, Rob, for, I hadn't done much business, I, just a little business with you, and you mentioned it, I asked if I could build some benches, and you put me in touch with Jack, and it's going from there, so. I thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate you being here, shake my hand. Thank yeah. you, brother. Three lucky vets have their benches because of them. No, I gotta say, I gotta go see all the vets. They're trying to cut me off. I'm not letting them. 
So we're going to go over and see Jerry, because Jerry got put to work tonight. In more ways than one. In more ways than one. Jerry, Vietnam. Vietnam, uh, 5th Special Forces Group, AT Medic. And then I started woodworking probably about 20 years ago and found Rob in, well, I guess 2019, applied for this program and uh, received a scholarship, and here I am. How's it been? I have had more fun. The, the biggest single thing coming up here is meeting Rob and his family. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and Danny. I Wait, forgot what, Danny. What, what, what? Oh. <sighs> Everybody's got such an attitude. And this guy from, was it Georgia? South Carolina, thank oh, you very much. One of those. Clemson. <laughs> anyway, super people, super nice, and you've got to come and do this. If you're a vet hanging out there, apply and come on up. We need you. Yeah. It's a good program. Yeah. Food was good? Food was great. Way too good, actually. You got a dovetail to show off? Uh, just finished this one, actually. Can I take it out? You can. That one and this one. This is ugly. Luther, can you just get, use that in hand? So this is this is your half blind. First half blind. Wow. First half blind. And this is actually my first complete uh, duck okay, Now it's got to be got to be planed up. This was the other one. That's a, that's Pete Ambrose. Oh, it's a Pete some Ambrose hard. Memorial Dovetail. <laughs> so if Pete's watching, Pete pioneered this particular type of dovetail. That's amazing. It's hard you, to do. You're in good company. It's hard pioneer. Let me tell you. Pete was one of our favorites. All-time favorites. Jerry, thank you. Thank you, Appreciate sir. your service, brother. Thank you. I think we have one more. Sorry, he was busy with glue. <laughs> Mike, what are you doing? Canadian vet. Sorry, Bill. Yep. From Alberta. Thanks for having me. Go Oilers. Go Oilers. Go Oilers. So, what can you tell us? Well, here I'm trying my first ever half blind dovetail. Uh, it went fair to middling, I would say. Uh, yeah, so far this week has been great. I've learned so much. We've done do dovetails, processing rough wood. Uh, it's been great. And meeting with all the other vets has just been amazing. Mil military background? Military background. Uh, I did 11 years in the Canadian military. Uh, six were in the infantry, and then the other five were in the Air Force. Uh, I went to Afghanistan in 2009 and 10. Um, yeah, I spent about eight months there. Yeah, and that's about it. I got out about four years ago. I was medically released, and uh, yeah. Anyone, anyone to say uh, a shout out to at home? Yes, I would like to say hello to Lacey. Love you. It's my wife. I would also like to say thanks to... Who was it? To Ross McKay as well. Uh, he was part of the Bench Brigade. He made us this... Uh, amazing plaque to go along with the bench that will be delivered, so I would like to thank them. And I would also like to give a shout out to Margo, my friend's daughter. Now, a word of encouragement to other wounded vets, getting them to come. Oh, and don't forget to mention... Oh, yeah, Luther. Great Luther. <laughs> this course wouldn't be anything without Luther. Um, yes, I would like to say to other veterans, uh, when I applied for this course, I didn't think I was going to actually get picked up for it. I, you know, I didn't know if it was for me, if I deserved it kind of thing, but it is, uh, it's been incredible. It's been one of the best weeks I've had in the last 10 years. So uh, if you think you could like this thing or you're having some troubles, I would, uh, I would sign up for it for sure. Mm. How's the food? Food is amazing. I think I've gained about 10 pounds. It's not over. <laughs> no. Now he's 75 pounds. Soaking wet. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Mike. Yeah, Appreciate no you being here. Appreciate being here. All right. Uh, they're going to want us to wrap this up. Is there any? Uh, is there anybody that hasn't had a chance to say something? It's the last call. Anyone like to say something? I'll say thank you. Eric. I'll say thank you to Rob no. Cosman for his uh, heart for veterans that have been wounded. What? Oh, thank you to Luther. Oh, I can't forget Luther. Never forget Luther. <laughs> but I met you, Luther, because of Rob Cosby. <laughs> <Well. laughs>
Oh, and I got to thank Danny Bell, of course. No, uh, all serious, folks. Uh, uh, Rob's got a heart of gold for uh, veterans. And as a civilian, this class has meant a bunch to me, not only with the skills I've learned, but working with some incredible folks here that have, have literally given their all. Um, I feel honored to be in this class and, and amongst these, these warriors that um, you know, have sacrificed their all. So it's great making friends. And, and um, if you ever want to learn woodworking and take your skill to a, a, a whole different level, I would say this is the way to go, immersion. Uh, we've done, uh, we've done, you haven't, you didn't mention, we did, we did, this is kind of interesting. We started with a piece of lumber like this, rough sawn, yeah. rough sawn, rough sawn lumber, and I decided to make it about that thick, because um, mine was really off, so uh, that was a major, that was a major accomplishment for me. Um, and then we did the we did the dovetails, which for me I'm challenged with. And then we did the, the half dovetails, half line. half line, half line dovetail. We learned how to use a shooting bird. Oh, we learned how to sharpen, and that's been kind of cool. Um, freehand sharpening. Still have mortise and tenons to do tomorrow. Mortise and tenons. So, anyways, great class. I can't recommend it enough for civilians. If for no other reason, to get to hang out with some really cool vets that have, that have done so much for our countries. So thank you, Rob, for your heart. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for being here. All right, so we have a draw to do because we didn't get to do our draw last time. Um, Matt, Matt happens to be a Canadian veteran, but he came as a civilian student. Any words of wisdom? Can you back camera? Yeah, back camera. Right back camera? Okay. Uh, words of wisdom. For me, uh, woodworking has been an amazing therapeutic experience. For anyone looking for something, whether it be a combat wounded veteran, uh, somebody that just needs to find a, another way to relax or uh, indulge in another hobby, strongly recommend it. Anyone to say hello to? Well, hello to uh, my wife and my two children. They're uh, home taking care of the farm so that I can attend here. So, big thank you to them. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Good luck. Keep at it. We're not done. What? Did we lose our camera? Wrap it up. How many, how many drawings, Frick? Two? Oh, the camera's here. All right, so we're, are you going to, where'd Frick go? Where'd he go? Oh, he's in there. So we're going to, we're going to uh, give away three dead cat sweaters, which we always do. Go to patsecretgarden.com if you don't get lucky enough. And then we're going to draw, we're going to draw for, uh, whose turn is it? Is it Kevin or is it? Kevin, or is it Jeff? Put the giveaway last. So we're going to give away one of Kevin's plaques. We call it plaques. It's a slate laser engraving. Yeah, laser engraving on slate. If you haven't seen it, they're awesome. Slate engraving. Slazer. And we're going to give away one of Jeff's bowls, shaving bowls, which I love. So as soon as Frick tells us, we're going to probably go over the other room. Okay. All right. So, Jake, if you can come over here. Jake's got the camera back on. So, we got, wait, wait a minute. Well, take the two of you in here. Yeah, just a second. Give Danny a chance to at least say something. Take the three of you in there and close it off. No, we're going to close it off here, but just talk to Danny. <laughs> Danny, tell them yes. something. Yes. Uh, would you hold that? Start with Luther. Uh, well, Luther. Oh, goodness. Um, so Danny Bell, uh, I actually, this is my second time back here in New Brunswick. Um, they invited me to come back as an assistant to the regional manager. <laughs> That's right. But, but uh, no, it's really interesting to be back here a second time and to be back as an assistant where you're not engaged in the learning. Last time I was here, um, the experience was so intense that it completely changed my life. And anybody who has met me in the last two years uh, is pretty familiar with that. But the difference now being knowing what 
everybody was going to come experience while they were here, knowing the experience that was going to change their life, and now watching it happen, watching lights come on, watching people connect with something, and then realize that their confidence is building, and, and you, having experienced it, I know what kind of change it was making for me, in me, and I, and I know it's making the same for them. So while you're, while you're witnessing uh, dots connecting, um, you know, while you're witnessing dots connecting, it's really intense to, to have that uh, be confirmed on that side as well. So, um, you know, to be here is a, a huge honor. I really appreciate being asked to come back. And, uh, you know, it's just great. So I appreciate it. And Luther? Uh, <laughs> I'm so thankful that Luther's here. No, uh, so actually to that. Luther and I, ever since we met, he called me when I was in Afghanistan to tell me to tell me that I made it. Come here. Come here, big guy. Bring it in. So from the, very, from the very moment we, uh, we met on the phone, we immediately started lobbing shots back and forth. Because I think he's a, you are an uh, artillery. Uh, Excuse me, I can't hear you. Artillery woman. Oh, yes, artillery. And uh, yes. so anyway, he did, he failed out of flight school. And, uh, I did. So he couldn't be a pilot. That's right. So he got jealous. Because he can't see. He's a call, so he calls me a rotor head. You can't, you can't, you can't fly if you're colorblind. You can't. Believe me, that's what the doctor told me. So. But in all reality, uh, my first time here two years ago, I was the last class in the long run before COVID hit. And uh, my biggest surprise was when I got here and realized there wasn't this massive conglomerate. It's not this massive business. It's a family that is uh, created an environment for people to come. And I can't even talk about it because I get emotional. Uh, it's, right. it's, Are you going to cry? Nope. Okay, don't around. be crying. Uh, it's so intense that for me personally, it's really difficult to discuss uh, unless I'm in a chill environment. But, you know, it's awesome. This guy, everybody comes here in the first two days, they're staring at him like this, like, when's the timeshare pitch coming, dude? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so years. hard to believe that you show up and you get $3,500 worth of tools for free. Uh, you get to learn these skills that you've seen uh, people learn in a couple of days. And then you get to take that skill, you get to take the tools, and now benches back home into uh, continuous therapy on your own. Uh, make no mistake, working with your hands in a, in a quiet way, uh, doing something like this is incredibly therapeutic. Um, it, it directly transfers for service members because most do things with their hands. Most are explained that your job has a standard that you've got to accomplish. The way to get to that standard is whatever technique you choose or you're, or you're taught. But for, for service members, that's a direct correlation. I understand my task purpose. These are my left and right limits. And then the rest is based on your experience. And uh, the inspiration people leave with, with here, uh, for me, started about a two-year tirade of trying to get people here. So, and that'll continue. And now we've got exponential uh, spokespeople out there trying to continue. So, if you're on my Instagram, Danny Bell Woodworks, or you're watching on YouTube, uh, there's countless guys out there who have been, and gals, who have been to this uh, experience, and you don't need to hear it from us. Uh, there's just a few off the top of our head. There's uh, Burris Woodworking. There's uh, O'Connor Woodworking. There's uh, Kevin uh, Smear down in Tennessee. There's... Um, just name a few more people. That vintage. Vintage Woodworks. Bobbert. Yep, Bobbert. Vintage veteran down in... Uh, vintage in veteran. In Jesse. Com. Yep. And, uh, Jesse Rufians. Jesse Rufians yep. up in uh, Newfoundland. So, Gary Burnett. Gary. Hey, buddy. Gary Burnett and I met at the Nashville airport on the way here because he came from Tennessee, too. And then ever since this course, Gary came to my house three times a week. Drove 70 miles to come hang out in the shop with me because of our experience here, bonded us for life. So, um, I know you hear it often, and uh, this guy cries five times a week over this, but the reality is, is when, you, when you get to see somebody who truly knows their purpose on this planet, and you get to witness them living that, it's, it's magnetic. And uh, thank you. You talk about all the stuff we give you, but when the question is asked, what did you give us? then all we do pales in comparison. So good on you. And thank you to all the veterans put out. They do what they do. And they all say, that regardless of the injuries, they would do it again. So just before, thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Just before we do the draw, 
We're going to give the last word to Luther, and then we're going to go in the other room, and Frick's going to do the draw for us. Did you say it. last word or loudest word? Well, a little bit of both. Because <laughs> I am artillery, so I'm deaf. You can't hear a thing. <laughs> but I'm surprised that you guys talk so funny. But the only thing I'll say is probably the biggest question I get, or the uh, I hear from vets uh, when we're doing two mics? When we're, when we're doing <laughs> applications to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> is I, I don't want to take somebody else's. The yes. <laughs> I don't want to take someone else's place, so I'm not going to do the application. And I'll tell you the same thing I tell them is, believe me, we have a board selection uh, for scholarships. Don't worry about that. Let us worry about who should be selected. Don't you worry about it. If you meet the criteria, please, please put an application. Let us take care of the rest. Don't worry about it. Go to robcosman.com website. Uh, go to the main menu. Hit the PHP, app, PHP button. And inside there, you'll find an explanation of the whole uh, organization. And you'll see the wall of heroes that have come so far, and most importantly, you'll see an application form, fill it out, and we're still uh, taking applications for the October, September, and August classes, so get your applications in. All right, thanks, Luther. I, I, told, you I told you numerous times, he and Super Dave, Luther is why we have this and where it is, and people like Super Dave are part of the foundation that allow us to get this done. And Danny and all the others out there. There's too many to mention. Yeah. Dave would be here right now, but he's digging a ditch. Yep, we're trying to get across trying the border. Trying to get across the border. <laughs> Let's go over and give some stuff away. Show our appreciation. Look, look over there for a second. Just stand here. All right. No, you go spin the other way. Why are we going to Frank? Oh, we don't have to. That's right. I don't need this, do I? No. Okay, Frick. All right. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, so first we're giving away three dead cats. All right, number one. Number one dead cat. He's going to... Can you guys close that door? I, I can't hear. Thank you. First winner is Krister Wenstrom in Sweden. Krister in Sweden. You'll love it. Keep you warm in Sweden. Number two is going to Paul Dreyer in Livonia. Michigan? Paul in Michigan. Yeah, it's a good state to have a dead cat sweater, trust me. Third one? And number three is going to Sam Dunnan in South Carolina. Sam in South Carolina. Eh, it'll be a little warm for part of the year, but they're cool nights. All right, I understand we're doing, we're doing two big draws. Sure. So we're going to do, uh, yeah, and you'll, get, you'll have your option. <coughs> A Kevin Burris original, which is on slate or granite, your choice, with the racks. And we're going to give away one of uh, one of Jeff's shaving bowls brushes. This is Badger Hair. Comes from the Badger Hair and Badger's Bomb. It's supposed to be the best. And some of that shave soap, which I need a new bar. I need a new bar. And that's Where going, are we sending them? That's going to Corey Bricker in Colorado. So Corey in Colorado, you, you will con you'll be contacted by Kevin. He may be able to do a custom one for you. What do we call it? It's a flag with a, with a theme. Right. And where's our shave brush going? Shave brush is going to Rory Miller, Massachusetts. Hey, Rory. Congratulations. You'll love it. You will love it. Big thank you to Frick behind the camera and, the, and Luther. Super Dave on? Uh, no, but... But Jeff and Paul have been making fun of him. Jeff and Paul have been making <laughs> Paul up in Montreal? Commander Paul? Ottawa, yeah. Ottawa? Hey, Paul. Our best to your wife. And Moose and Chris for coming down. Danny for being here all week. And our wonderful cooks, my, my family and uh, Anita. The food has been absolutely fantastic. Um, do we want to announce when our next one's going to be now, Frick, or are we just going to put two it out? Two weeks from now. It's two weeks from today. Two weeks from today? Or two weeks from tomorrow, I guess. Two weeks, two weeks from, from Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Two weeks from Saturday, we will see you. Appreciate your support. Have a wonderful two weeks. And we'll try to do some more Instagram. So if you're not following us on Instagram, do it. How do they find us on Instagram? Just Rob Cosman? 
Rob, Rob Cosman Hunter Woodworking, and we'll do some more lives between now and the end of the week. Show you what the, how, what the guys managed to do. Thank you for your support. See you.